The Democrats continued their assault on Christians over the weekend. Through a series of slights, the Democrats confirmed that if you're a Christian, the Democrat Party doesn't have your back. In fact, the Democrats confirmed that they will turn this government, using money they confiscate from you, against Christian values, teachings, and beliefs. An ideology of evil. We describe how the Democrats are leaving little doubt in today's preamble. Let's start out with the Democrats' guiding spirit, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi. This fake Catholic gave a nod to Easter Sunday on her ex-account, but then proceeded to honor someone else on the day Christians believe Jesus Christ conquered death itself. Pelosi writing, quote, Happy Cesar Chavez Day, his legacy as a fearless and tireless champion for justice and dignity for all continues to inspire our nation. Today, his fight for better pay and protections for workers lives on as we work to build and realize a better life for all Americans, end quote. Let's dive into the leftist man who Pelosi chose to honor alongside Jesus of Nazareth. Before a congressional subcommittee, a labor subcommittee in 1979, Cesar Chavez said this about illegal aliens, quote, when the farm workers strike and their strike is successful, the employers go to Mexico and have unlimited, unrestricted use of illegal alien strike breakers to break the strike. The employers use professional smugglers to recruit and transport human contraband across the Mexican border for the specific act of strike breaking. But Chavez didn't stop at dehumanizing illegal aliens by calling them human contraband. Cesar Chavez was opposed to illegal aliens, further dehumanizing them by calling them, quote, wetbacks. In 1969, Chavez and members of the United Farm Workers Union marched through the Imperial and Coachella Valleys in California to the border of Mexico to protest growers' use of illegal aliens as strike breakers. Joining him on the march were the Reverend Ralph Abernathy and big lefty U.S. Senator Walter Mondale. This led to another Democrat invention. In 1973, the United Farm Workers set up what they called a wet line along the United States-Mexico border to prevent illegal aliens from getting into America. During one such event in which Cesar Chavez was not involved, some UFW members under the guidance of Chavez's cousin Manuel physically attacked the illegal aliens after they tried to convince them not to break into America to undermine the union's efforts. All this dehumanization and violence brought to you by the left wing and Democrats. And Cesar Chavez is a man Democrats honor instead of or alongside the Prince of Peace. But Democrats were also choosing Easter Sunday to push perversion, using the day to promote a transvestite day of visibility, Joe Biden issuing the statement from the People's House addressing transvestites and others, quote, you are America and my entire administration and I have your back. Now, therefore, I, Joseph R. Biden Jr., occupier of the Oval Office of the United States of America by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2024 as Transgender Day of Visibility. The observance was no mystery. Barack Obama started the ball rolling back during his regime. Biden's regime knew the date, knew this was coming, and rolled it out for maximum impact and a slap in the face to people of faith. Joe Biden, another fake Catholic, wanted Christians to know who was boss. As for one of our founding fathers, John Adams, he proclaimed, our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Through what transpired over the weekend, Joe Biden, his regime, and the Democrat Party wanted to send a clear message to America and the world that America's government under their rule was no longer a government of moral or just people. A stark contrast to our 40th president, who inspired a spiritual renewal during his time in office. Nor will we ever. We command no worship. We mandate no belief. But we poison our society when we remove its theological underpinnings. We court corruption when we leave it bereft of belief. All are free to believe or not to believe. All are free to practice a faith or not. But those who believe 
must be free to speak of and act on their belief to apply moral teaching to public questions. Hmm. Courting corruption. That sounds an awful lot like Democrats. But courtesy of those Democrats, that's all been shut down, folks, through their efforts in GovEd and empowering the state to dominate our lives in all things, the Democrats have become the godless and soulless apparatchiks that Reagan warned us about. Climate has changed greatly since then. And since it has, it logically follows that religion needs defenders against those who care only for the interests of the state. There are these days many questions on which religious leaders are obliged to offer their moral and theological guidance. And such guidance is a good and necessary thing. And by their actions over the weekend, the Democrats have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt their sole interest lies with the state and not with our people. So what then is our course? Well, oddly enough, through the teachings of Jesus Christ, Reagan had an answer to that question too. No government schemes are going to perfect man. We know that living in this world means dealing with what philosophers would call the phenomenology of evil, or as theologians would put it, the doctrine of sin. There is sin and evil in the world, and we're enjoined by Scripture and the Lord Jesus to oppose it with all our might. Those words were as right then as they are today. There is evil in the world. And the leftists and the Democrat Party show us exactly what that looks like as they sought to diminish the holiest day on the Christian calendar. I mentioned Ramadan was on March 12th. Can anyone imagine for one instant a Democrat doing to that high holiday what was done to Easter over the weekend? Would leftists disrupt a sacred service in a mosque as was done at St. Patrick's Cathedral over the weekend? We all know the answer. Isn't it time we as a people remembered who we are? Isn't it time we do what we're called on to do, oppose evil with all of our might, wherever we find it, especially if we find it, as we have, in the Democrat Party and in our own government? 